so grateful to have you here today. We have Christina being the gaffer as we make one of her signature snails. So they're quite large and it's going to be quite fun. But we're also going to put it inside of a snow globe. Um, that way we can kind of integrate some of the work that I'm doing with what Christina does. So normally when we've been making the snow globes, I've already had the whole top dome completed. For this demonstration, we thought that it would be nice for the people that have been watching this every week to see the whole thing. So I'm going to start by doing that. Will you check the Facebook to make sure it's good? The domes are hollow, so I have a blowpipe right here. And I've really been trying not to do any of this traditional glass blowing with COVID because it does take the physical act of blowing and putting your mouth on things. So I have a hollow blow pipe. I'm gonna get a tiny little bit of glass out of my furnace. My furnace right now is at 2,099 degrees. I would love it if it was just a smidge hotter. And I have a little bit of clear glass right here. I've got a wood block. This is going to organize the shape before I blow a bubble into it. So I pour some air into the end of the blowpipe and then I captured it with my thumb. As the air travels up the blowpipe, it starts to expand in the heat and then I have a bubble. So I'm not sure if you can see but this mass right here that I have is hollow. Because this dome is a hollow form. You see now I was thinking maybe you could get our um, mushroom snow globe. Okay. It's, it's by the photo booth. Okay. Christina's going to get an example of one of these that we've done before. It isn't filled with the shaky stuff yet. I know that's a technical term. But that way you have a little bit of a visual on what we're working on. I've got some more clear glass. And maybe I have a little more than I want, so I'll probably cut some off. This glass looks orange, but that's just because it's so super duper hot that I can pull one cup with my tools. And Christina's got a mushroom and little baby snail snow globe that we did before. This is just something that we've been working on for fun. As artists, we always need to try to keep exploring. And we all go through little phases where we try to work on things. For me, it's been snow globes. It's been a lot of fun collaborating with my friends to put silly things inside a snow globe. I'm organizing my glass, then I'm going to keep blowing it up a little bit more. Can you get me the blow hose? Now the kind of glass that we use in here is what we call soft glass. By soft glass we don't mean that if you push on it, it'll wiggle around or that there's any um, lack of durability. I'm just blowing it to make it a little bigger. By soft glass, what we mean is it has a lower melting temperature. I'm going to take that. But it also can take drastic changes in so this kind of glass is typically used for art glass. It can be used for dishware, but it's not used for anything that's going to be taking any kind of high temperature or low temperature or changes in temperature. So you want to want to make a mug and put hot water in it, because that will probably shock it and make it break. Okay. 
traditionally, you'd have a person down there. But, I'm just multitasking extra. So that we're not sharing dirt. So you can see the dome of my snow globe is getting bigger. That's because I've got a plastic tube on the end of the blowpipe and I have it wedged underneath my mask. And I'm inflating it. So I have my dome piece, right? But it's not done yet. It needs to be open on the other side. So how does that happen? I've got to flip it over off this blowpipe. Want to just flash? So Christina's going to keep this warm for me. I'm going to make what's called a punty. P-U-N-T-Y. A punty is a solid rod with a little bit of glass on it. And it's going to be a temporary handle on the lid of my dough so that I can open up the base of it. I'm ready. Remember, we already talked about how this is soft glass, so Christina had to make sure that I wasn't too cold. Sorry about the bum, everyone. <laughs> she had to make sure I wasn't too cold or else this would break. Well, I made the top part. We'll show how it breaks when it's cold because when I drop a little bit of room temperature water on the top and give it a tap, the vibration will break it free. Now I can heat and open the hole. We do work two other parts of glass here, but we work them in the flame shop. So we use an even softer type of glass to make beads, which I'm going to start teaching in March. So if you're a beater, I'm going to start teaching some bead making classes. And those are really fun because the color palette for that kind of glass is very vibrant. And we also teach boris silicate classes on this porch in the form of art glass. So I have a rose class this February. I have heart pending classes. So March we'll move on to caterpillars. And then in the summertime I teach dragon class. Those are the only kind of classes that we're teaching nowadays is classes in the flame shop. It's quite a bit safer in there because everybody is under their own ventilation hood. Versus in here where you can see we're really up close and personal. Which is not ideal if you're trying to run a business and you have to be in close contact with people. I didn't like some of the funky stuff that was on the edge of my dough, so I cut it up. Now I'm going to heat it up, open it a little, take a paddle. And then we're going to put this dome away in a little box that we call the pickup box. And you probably actually hear it clicking. It's sitting right next to the camera. Facebook can see the corner of it. Ooh, Facebook can see the corner of it. <laughs> so that box right now is at 960. Later I'm gonna turn it up to a, around 1050 degrees. In there is the second dome that I already made because we're humans and sometimes we make mistakes. And this dome will hang out in there. Paddle lock. That way when we're ready for it, paddle lock. It'll be hot and I can pick it up. For all the other demos, I was doing these too early to kind of shorten the demo. But I thought if I'm going to mix logos for everyone, then you should probably see a good portion of it. So the next step that we're going to do is make the snail. And we had a little poll going on Facebook and Christina's 
page and in our group and we decided that we were going to do a sparkly green and cobalt blue snap. Our friend Pam picked those colors and she's the winner on that but also because Christina and I, those are our favorite colors so majority win. I'm putting a little water on my punty. Christina is getting ready to open the box. I'm going to tap this guy in there. And it broke free from the punty. So now we can work on the snail. Yay, step one stud. Yeah, we have. Say that 
but while she's getting that all set up, I just wanted to take a moment and make sure that you know how much we all appreciate you. Um, life's been pretty tough since COVID, and we haven't been able to teach as much or really bring in the income that we normally rely on. So doing things like this, um, we love connecting with you all. We really, really, really appreciate your support. We put a limited number of classes up, enough that we feel that we're not coming in contact with too many people, um, but we're all under the hood of the flame shop, and those classes have been booking. We've had a lot of awesome students having so much fun, and we wouldn't survive if it weren't for this. If you're looking for Valentine's Day presents, I have been putting up some special Valentine's Day products. I do, like I said earlier, I'm teaching a rose class. And actually, I did have a new opening on Sunday for our rose class. So I have an opening up on Valentine's Day at 11 a.m. for up to four people at the same party. Our other um, reservation had to reschedule because they came in contact with COVID. So we're super grateful for them to communicate that with us early. But I do have some openings for a class if you want to learn how to make some roses. I am also uploading roses up on our website today. So we're going to have a whole bunch for sale. If you're looking for your Valentine's Day gifts, we got you covered. So Christina's announcing to me that she's going to cut the snail eyes. And snail eyes are like antennas if you're not snail savvy. Antennas, those little balls on the end, they're quite cute. It took us a long time to figure out how to make these and make them look snailish. So we're sharing our secrets with the world right now. You better appreciate it. Just kidding. But really. So she's got a pair of shears. Maybe her hand might be in the way of smidge right now. But she's kind of cutting what I think looks like funny ears on the very end of her vessel. Now she's pulling out the snail nose, making a mark, making a mark. And it looks a little cold, so she'll probably heat it up to be able to keep pulling it. She's getting it nice and hot and by reheating furnace. This is around 2,400 degrees right here, so it's pretty darn hot. It runs on propane and four stair. And when I turn it on for the day, it takes about an hour to get hot. So it takes a lot of energy and we make sure to use it efficiently. As of right now with COVID, we've only been starting it up about once a week, where we fill all of our orders all morning long. And then we go live for you. The glass is always heating and cooling. She got it nice and hot. And then she's gonna pull out our eyeballs, our cute little snail eyes. And she's gonna kinda flip them up a little bit. And the glass stretches really nice when it's hot. And then she's pulling out her snail mouth nose thing. And my turn is gonna come. I'm gonna make us our snail Shell. And our snail shell is going to be sparkly green and cobalt blue. Snail face. We got a cute snail. We got some snail eyes. 
In order to do that, the shell must be really, really hot. So I'm doing that. Christina's gonna go sit at the bench, and I'm gonna screw this hot glass like puppet arms, so that she has all the control because this is her snap. She's the gaffer. I'm working as the assistant. that I should have used when I was 
is making the glow. So I would have the exact measurements of the bottom of the glow. But I just recently killed another big pair, so I've got it. Guys, the nail has to be much smaller than this. We'll clip the eyeballs up when we're on the base. Yeah. We are aware of our snail size. We're going to fix the snail tail. Then we're going to make the base of the snow glow. I'm pulling on our hot torch again because it makes these jobs move quickly. And I'm sorting the tail. Look whenever you need to. Yeah. Like soon, probably because the eyeballs are hidden.
flash. Go 
a really cool idea is to like break it open. Whenever you're sticky, I'll take it.